What's going on YouTube? Kilton Gunsmith here with something pretty cool. What I got is a Irma BP, or sorry, EP-22. It is a Luger pistol in 22. These are made in Germany. And the cool part is, is it's got the same weight and action toggle uh, as an original Luger. And they do have some similarities in design with the toggle lock system but it's also slightly different in regards to takedown because these are direct blowback. This is a toggle lock blowback. Um, it does take down a little bit different. It's a little more simple to an extent. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a field strip on this to show you. Uh, there's two issues with it. The customer states, this is a customer gun. Um, it is jamming every round or two and the ball detent in the safety selector is missing. So I'm going to have to replace that. i got to see if I have any in stock. Um, put another spring in it to give it some tension. But, I mean, it still works just fine. It's just the safety's floppity, floppity. So, but without further ado, let's go ahead and strip it. So take your magazine out. Obviously, it's clear. I'm not going to flippity, floppity a handgun. So right here in the front, this is a takedown lock block. So what you want to do is you're going to pull the barrel, pull it forward just a little bit, and this will come right on out. So this locks the action together. When it shoots, it locks it in place. And now that you have it loose, you're going to go ahead and push it back. Once you push it back, you're going to expose the pivot pin here, and you're just going to push it through. It doesn't matter which direction. It's omnidirectional. So you go ahead and pull that out. Now it is under spring tension like you just seen. It's okay. <clears throat> and you'll lift the talk block back and it should all come right on out. I prefer to take the springs and stuff out first so I'm not launching them even further. And pull that up. The bottom spring retaining cup comes out and your bolt assembly comes out. Now you don't really need to take this apart unless you want to because you have full access to it all. So with the cycling issue that the customer says honestly I think it just needs a good cleaning. It's a little gummed up. It's dry. Um, I think they might have used grease or a really thick uh, viscosity oil which rim fires especially semi-autos you don't want to run a thick oil and you want to make sure you always use high velocity rounds when you're using a rimfire cartridge, especially in handguns because the spring is going to be a little stronger than most non-velocity, high velocity rounds can handle. And then once you take your toggle block and your bolt assembly out, then you can pull the barrel assembly forward and it slides right out. Ta-da! Then you can do your cleaning and whatnot. Um, when you oil a firearm, generally speaking, you want to make sure you just put a little bit of oil. Uh, if you put too much oil, especially on rim fires, everything firearms related uh, when it comes to maintenance is even more amplified with rim fire because they're more sensitive and prone to jamming malfunctions. That's why another reason why it's discouraged for people to carry a rim fire like a 22 long rifle for a concealed carry because of so many higher increased chances of jams, misfires, things like that versus a 380, a 9 mil, 45, whatever. And I can see right now inside the chamber and barrel, I don't know what you can see, but it's pretty gunky. Uh, the oil that is on here is pretty thick and sticky. So it's a grease of some sort they use, which is a no-go. And you can definitely see it on here. Um, it looks like it's well oiled for some people, but that's actually grease and carbon and whatnot. Not so much carbon, but grease because it's very thick and tacky. You don't want that. And then for reassembly, you just do the reverse order and <clears throat> make sure your grooves are in place in line with the grooves in this. Slide it back on. Make sure... Your pivot pin holes exposed and the springs can be a little bit of a pain no big deal 
You're going to put your sleeve nipple in first. I've, first time I've actually seen one of these is when I was stationed in Colorado. I seen one at a shop before I moved, and I wanted it, but didn't have the money at the time. They're only running four to five hundred bucks at the time. Um, they're probably about five, maybe six hundred at most now. Let's see, longer spring will go in the bolt, which we'll put that in first. Same thing, you've got a grooves on the sides here. You want to make sure it's in the grooves of the frame. Toggle lock up. Pinkies up. <laughs> all right. Make sure your bolt's all the way forward. Now, in the bolt in the rear, you have a hole in the top and a hole in the bottom. The hole in the bottom is going to be the short spring. hole in the top is going to be long spring. And you want to make sure this pointed side goes in. Make sure that hole lines up with the pin block there. And this part, you want spring without the piece going in like that. Into the sleeve it goes. Okay, and now we have those partially in place. You're gonna make sure the loop is lined up with the hole in the toggle, which it's spring pressure, so be careful. There's a possibility I might launch it myself. And then you're gonna push it into place. And you could use a screwdriver, punch, whatever, to help line it up. There's a little divot inside here. You wanna make sure the ball or the spring retaining piece is in place with that. And you're gonna push it in, take your retaining pin, pivot pin, and get everything lined up the best you can. Get a punch or something to help you line it all up. Put your pin in. Push it forward in place. Push it forward, pull again just a little bit. And you get your toggle lock piece curved part forward. And then you're going to push it back in place. And now we're going to do a functions check. It might not feel like it's locked in place, but once you push the barrel back into place, now you're going to charge it. And this is stiff because I still got to clean it. And that's another indicator why it's having malfunctions feeding and cycling because it's getting hung up halfway, which is one defect to the Luger. But if you keep it maintained and cleaned, it will run. So now that's in place. Now, even though the detent's missing, which I'm going to have to find a replacement, safety still works. Fire. Click. Do it again. And there we go. Put it in fire. Click. So, that is the Irma E22. EP22, sorry, keep messing that up. There's a couple variant models. These were actually manufactured originally in World War II, the original ones. Um, I believe this is a reproduction, but I am not 100%. Um, these were made for civilians for competitions. The Germans were big in a civilian marksmanship program, just like in the U.S. We have the CMP, uh, Civilian Marksmanship Program. Germany had something pretty much the same, except they had pistols and rifles. They had the Mausers, and they had these, and they had Mausers also in 22. So hopefully it helped somebody out, and hopefully you enjoyed. I'll do a little short video of it shooting, hopefully, and uh, get this baby cleaned up and hopefully uh, fully functional again. Well, it's functional, but get the safety and all that stuff to take care of. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Maybe you learned something. And then, of course, get your magazine. Ta-da. And these do lock on empty. So once you have it loaded, cock it, and it'll drop forward, put it around in the chamber. So thanks for watching.